So now I'm going to use a dark, this is a dark purple. I'm going to texturize all of this, this part of the, around the mouth and snout. You can see I'm using quite a random stroke. And I'll be alternating between the dark blue and the dark purple. Now this is that type of texture stroke I did on the, on the elephant video. So I'm leaving plenty of that underlayer showing through, but this is more of the darker areas going in. So the underlayer is working as the mid-tone. This is the darks. So the little recesses and texture areas and cracks and creases that's going in between that mid-tone underlayer. Then I'll put the lights on top. So this technique is fairly fast and this is the way that I use to create that texture without taking hours or weeks to try and duplicate the photo and I think it's still going to give me that realism in the end in a much much quicker technique. Well I'm happy with how that's turning out. I need to go darker in areas though. So that's where I'm going to come back on top now. I'm going to use a nice sharp black and I'm going to do that same texture technique in those dark areas. The benefit of pastels, yes, we can go light over dark, but we can also go dark over light. So you can see some of these areas need really dark areas in there and some areas are using or have got a very, very dark blue. Now I haven't got that in, I've got a few sets of pastels and none of them have got an extremely dark blue which is almost black but it's still very vibrant blue. So what I'll do with that, I'll put in plenty of this black pastel and then I'll come in with a blue pencil and just layer that colour on top just to get that nice punchy blue. So you can see same technique putting in all these little bits of texture this was the, always going to be the real challenge for this piece. I knew the eye and the teeth weren't going to be too difficult. But the texture, that was another thing. That, uh, that was the challenge and I like to challenge myself. And by challenging myself, I think I'm showing you guys uh, different techniques, hopefully, as well. And obviously you could apply this to other reptiles and uh, perhaps frogs and toads and all different subjects. Dragons. So I'm just going to carry on applying this dark. Going with a lot of the uh, lighter tones, trying to get that texture. This is all real time at the moment. So you can see I go fairly fast when I'm doing things like uh, kind of like an organic texture like this because if you go very slow, you can start to get a bit um, regimented, a bit robotic with it, and all of a sudden you start to get the same marks, angles, positions on a lot of these uh, marks that I'm making now. So I'm trying to be fairly random. So I'm looking at my reference and seeing these texture markings, but I'm, I'm looking for that general appearance of it as I said on part one rather than trying to duplicate all of those little tiny markings because that really would take forever and I'd most definitely get bored doing that. You can see my pencil is quite sharp. I'm turning it very frequently so that's stopping it, it getting a flat edge within a few strokes. So I don't sharpen my pencils very frequently. And you can see how I'm building this up layer upon layer. So I'm never covering the preceding layer completely. I'm letting a lot of that show through. Parts I'm putting in now is, are the highlights where that very bright sun is, is catching all those little indentations and texture surfaces on this crocodile's head. You 
I've got a few lines in here as well it's not all these small marks so just popping a few of those in and I'll be putting more of the um, individual scales in that especially around the area near the teeth I'll put them in a bit later on so I assume these are more like uh, scars scratches deep scratches and then I can come back starting again with that texture so you can see I've switched to a, a blue pencil there's lots of different colors on here that's what's making it uh, really interesting rather than it being just a, a gray crocodile And these marks are coming down towards the mouth as it's going lighter and lighter. Another one of those scars or scratches. And I'm deliberately not putting the teeth in yet because I want to keep lots of those areas on there very white. I don't want to be uh, rubbing and smudging on top of them. So that's the only real reason I've, I've uh, been keeping them till pretty much the, the end of the drawing. So I'm hoping that I'll be able to pull them off and that they'll actually, uh, they'll actually work very well. Building another layer going on top much lighter now. Obviously this is just a pure white at the moment. But you can see how it's um, because all those other colours are in between these marks is again that um, general still got a general greenish look to the area that I'm working on now so with pastels as I mentioned before we work normally from kind of the, the process I use is getting the the mid tone in the general color first then going in with the darks in some areas and then gradually going lighter and lighter finishing with the lightest light in this case that's going to be the the white and all those layers give a more realistic appearance rather than trying to do one flat single layer I love the, this about pastels the fact I can layer upon layer which is exactly how I would do it with oils as well If you would like to see a lot of this in real time, there's a full two hour version over on my Patreon Wildlife Art channel. Plus, when you join there, there's no monthly contract and for $9 you get access to all those other videos I've released over the last two years.